I think the Steelers have never been 14 point underdogs uh, in in like 50 years or so. Basically, as long as we've been tracking lines. So good luck to you, Kenny Pickett, going against the Bills defense. Now, there's a lot of interesting fantasy guys in this match. And one guy who is going to kick off Flex Friday bizarrely because he was a top 10 pick pretty much across the board is Najee Harris is he no longer a must start fantasy player particularly when you're 14 point underdogs to the Bills I I I think you're going to be hard pressed now maybe you know maybe like whatever you you got James Robinson late you you picked up Jeff Wilson off the waiver wire so like there are scenarios where I could see you would have two like both of those guys I have ranked higher than Najee Harris this week so there are scenarios in which I could see you having two running backs better than Najee Harris, but nah, I think more more likely you're starting him if you have him. You're just lowering expectations for him. I have it running back 20 this week, so I still have him as a, a low-end starter against the Bills. You know, what you're basically hoping for is volume. So you see it there on your screen. You know, he's had at least 18 touches in three out of four games this year. He had 12 touches in week one against the Bengals, but he did score the touchdown. He's got a touchdown in two out of four games this year. We expect the offense to be better under Kenny Pickett. And they use they haven't used him much in the passing game, but it's not like he's a total liability there. Obviously, he he, he that was a big part of his fantasy success last year. So Najee Harris, make no mistake. It's a tough match because the Bills defense that allow the second fewest yards per carry and the fourth fewest rush yards. But I think just volume for for Najee Harris, is he getting the insane volume he got last year? No. But is he getting enough that you likely don't have a better option? Yes, I'm just – he's more of a lower-end RB2 and you're hoping that he falls into the end zone versus the, you know, top eight or nine guy that you drafted him to be. Yep, 14 and a half carries per game plus the passing game work that he's generally going to get. That's and right again, let's see what this offense looks like under, under Pickett. We yep. think it'll be better. Maybe Pickett dumps it off a little bit more yep. than uh, Mitch Trubisky. We think they're going to be in scoring position more than they were yep. under Trubisky. Whatever it is, it's going to be different, and that's all you want. If you're a Najee Harris owner, you just want something different. A uh, thousand percent. Now, the guy who is potentially going to ride the most of that difference is George Pickens, yep. who has been the player of the week in terms of waiver wire pickups if he was on waivers. Uh, how highly are you rating George Pickens? Yeah, I like him. Certainly you wish he was a better matchup than the Buffalo Bills, who have the number one pass defense through four weeks. But the positives here are, again, small sample size, but it's all we've got to go off of. You know, a 30% target share once Kenny Pickett came in last week. Yep. I mean, he was looking for George Pickett. He, he got four targets. He caught all of them, 71 yards. Like, they're targeting him down the field. We saw the amazing catch on Thursday night against the Browns. We know the athletic ability is there for George Pickens. We know the Steelers have a long history of developing wide receivers into really good players both NFL and fantasy wise I think George Pickens is the next guy in that line they're taking deep shots with him he's got the third highest average depth of target so far this season Pickett we think is an upgrade over Trubisky I have George Pickens as wide receiver 41 so not a must start but I do think he is a a viable flex and you know in your league where you play three wide receivers and you generally like wide receiver versus uh, uh, running back in a flex especially if it's PPR yeah, I, I, am, I am more pro than anti-George Pickens this week. I'm very pro on him season long for the rest of the season, but this week I'm more pro than anti, even though the tough matchup with the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. A little bit of buzz that Pickens is the guy in Pittsburgh going forward. You want? No, you still want no, Deontay like, Johnson. Thousand. He's still the number one guy. It's one half of a sample size of Pickens being the guy. Like Deontay Johnson has been the number one receiver across multiple mm-hmm. quarterbacks in Pittsburgh. He's one of the 15 most talented receivers in the game. He's still the guy that you want, but Pickens, potentially a guy in your flex spot. Devin Singletary, uh, is he someone that you're starting against the Steelers defense that even without TJ Watt has been a top 10 unit? We talked about Devin Singletary last week, who was on the love list. He paid off as well. I, I'm in on Devin Singletary. What's, ex- what's exciting here is that he is playing a ton. Where it started out like he was kind of in a committee, but as the as the Bills got into some tougher matchups, you know, the loss to the Dolphins, the the the, the back and forth game with the Ravens last week that they won, they're using uh, Devin Singletary quite a bit. You look at the numbers; he's ninth among running backs in snap share. He's got the second most receiving yards among running backs. Right? He's fourth in receptions among running backs. And this matchup with Pittsburgh doesn't really scare you. Pittsburgh has allowed a touchdown to an opposing running back in each of the last three games. Who's going to score? Which running back do you think has the better shot at a touchdown? 
it's Devin Singletary in this game. So, yes, I think he's a high-end flex, low-end RB2 against a Steelers defense that's 24th against the run. Yep, haven't been great against the run. Okay, Gabe Davis, uh, the most talked about fantasy player in the offseason, arguably, hasn't happened the past two weeks. Are you uh, ringing the alarm bell on Gabe Davis or are you continuing to start him? No, I'm, st I'm starting him. I think he's a viable wide receiver three. He comes in at wide receiver 28 for me as we sit here on Friday morning. Obviously, the ranks will be updated over the weekend as we get more news on Friday practice reports. But, you know, Isaiah McKenzie remains in the concussion protocol. We already know Jamison Crowder has been ruled out. Dawson Knox has been ruled out. And to me, that's the big one because the calling card for Gabe Davis has been touchdown equity. This is a guy who last year was top five in terms of end zone targets among wide receivers, despite not playing a lot. And this year he is playing a lot, right? He's, he's, he, he's played 100% of the snaps. He's run the most routes by any Buffalo wide receiver. Now, so far that hasn't totally translated into fantasy production, obviously. He was wide receiver 87 last week, despite playing a ton of snaps. But my expectation here is, again, with a narrow target tree, no Knox, no Crowder, maybe no McKenzie, I do think Gabe Davis gets a, a, a nice target share against a Steelers secondary, by the way, that you can throw on. Yep. I mean, and Pittsburgh has been bad. They are a bottom 12 pass defense so far this year. Give me Gabe Davis as a wide receiver three this week. Yep. Uh, you know who also hasn't had a great past two weeks is Stefan Diggs, who hasn't really lit things up either. I think Miami were kind of selling you're, out. You're talking about the chief ball officer, Stefan yeah, Diggs. CBO. Friend of the podcast, yeah. Stefan Diggs. Absolutely. Yep. So Miami, they were selling out to stop deep balls. It was all over the middle to Devin Singletary. And then the Baltimore game, like Josh Allen went 19 of 36 in tough conditions. You kind of have to throw that out. Now, this game is at home in Buffalo. We'll see what the weather will be like, but they're yep. used to playing in Buffalo. Yep, they are. Now, Lions, Patriots, Blockbuster, Pats, Bailey Zappi's minus three and a half point favorite against the Detroit Lions. The over-under is 45 and a half. And I, I bet that line moves, knowing that Amon Ross St. Brown is back, Shark is back, you know, Reynolds, he'd missed er practice earlier. Yep. My guess is that line moves. Yeah, to me that line should be Patriots minus two, not minus three and a half. So I would bet on the Lions plus three and a half. Now, every week it's a question, Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Harris, who are you starting and can you start both of them? Yeah, and I think the answer is yes. Yep. I think you can start both of them. I, again, Bailey Zappi, give the Patriots credit and give that young man credit. Like, he came in in a very tough situation and played well. And honestly, like, they had a real shot to win that game at Green Bay. I think you could argue maybe they should have. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is Zappi, I think, played really well. And they're going to be conservative with him. Like, it's still a run-first offense. You think about the Detroit Lions. Only two teams in the NFL have given up more rushing yards per game than the Detroit Lions. You can run on Detroit. They've allowed 120 rushing yards and multiple rushing touchdowns to running backs in three of four games this year. So I think both Ramondre Stevenson, my running back 19, and Damian Harris, my running back 23, are viable starters this week as well. I've Stevenson is a top 20 play, and Harris is a high upside flex. Rest of the season, who do you want, Stevenson or I still Harris? want Stevenson, who's had consecutive games with 16 touches and 85 scrimmage yards. I just I think he's the more versatile player. I, Harris is a nice running back, make no mistake, but he's the more versatile player there. Harris is certainly leading in terms of touchdowns, three to one, but more receptions and receiving yards for Stevenson. They both have over 200 rushing yards. Um, Harris has just 10 more rushing attempts than Stevenson's on the year and so feels like slowly but surely the this role is becoming more Stevenson heavy again if you're telling me this guy's getting 16 or more touches in a game for the Patriots I want in on that with Ron J Stevenson yeah especially given the passing game usage I think I think each week you make Damian Harris a slight favorite to get more just rushing attempts than Stevenson, but you make Stevenson it's a heavy like favorite a, to get passing game work. A thousand Harris. percent. And Harris is more likely to, like if you're you know putting odds on it, he's more likely to fall into the end zone. Who's yeah. you know? But uh, I, again, I think both guys are viable this week against the Lions. Okay, quickly. Josh Reynolds. Uh, obviously, this is hugely contingent on Amon Ra St. Brown. If and he DJ doesn't Shark. play. And, and DJ, DJ Shark, Shark, by yep. the way. I, I think, uh, like I ranked him going... I ranked him on Thursday as wide receiver 30. Now with St. Brown, if we get news after practice, he looked good. He's good to go for Sunday. You know, no setbacks during practice. Assuming that Shark and St. Brown are active, we thank Josh Reynolds for his service last week. We'll remember it fondly. <laughs> but back to the waiver wire you go. Unless, unless one of those guys is out. And hey, if Sharks and St. Brown get hurt again, 
we will revisit you, Josh Reynolds. Did your bold prediction of that win, Josh yes. Reynolds, top 20 wide receiver? He was an easy top 20 wide receiver okay. last week. There you go. Hey, let good. me look, I'll look that up. Josh Reynolds um, in week four was wide receiver nine. Wow. I could have said top 10 and been right. So Mark, Michael 20. Smith wanted you to get. I could have said, to said top, top 10 nine. and you pulled out. Pulled out. You should have yeah, gone all I in. Should have gone all in. I didn't go as. I didn't. It doesn't matter. I didn't go as bold as Michael Smith. That was a great call by Michael Smith, who said. Literally said 330 passing yards <laughs> yeah. and 30 rushing yards for Geno Smith. Two passing touchdowns and rushing touchdowns. And literally, like, not only – he hit those numbers and went above them it's on both – I mean, like, unbelievable call by Mike. Michael Smith should never make another prediction again. He should abstain. He should just yes. be like that. I'm going out on that one. Walk out. Exactly okay. right. Seahawks with Geno Smith, a five-and-a-half-point underdogs in New Orleans. No mm. respect for the rejuvenated Geno Smith, comeback no. player of the year candidate. The total is 46-and-a-half, and I think the most interesting fantasy player in this game is Rashad Penny, who for the first time this year flashed back to the last six weeks of last season when he was the best running back in the sport. Playing against the Detroit Lions makes a lot of running backs look good. Having said that, we've seen sustained success from Rashad Penny, as you mentioned, dating back to last year. Um, this year, the Seahawks offense better than advertised, better than we expected. He's played at least 69% of the snaps in three out of the four games so far this year. He's averaging 5.96 yards per carry. That is the fourth highest among running backs. So Rashad Penny, uh, I currently have him. Uh, Rashad Penny going on the road to New Orleans which has been a bottom 12 run defense so far this year. Yeah, I think Rashad Penny, look, he comes in at running back 33. So I think he's more of a running back three. He's more of a flex play, but I I'm more buying him than not, if you will, because normally I'd just be out entirely on the Seahawks run game. Yeah. And, and when my ranks come out, he'll be up a little bit higher as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think he's, he's in that 20 to 30 range. He's a flex play. I think he's probably the highest variance running back in the entire league week oh, to dude. week because he has these two touchdown, 151-yard games in him with a surprising amount of consistency. And then he also has games where he might just get seven carries and they want to go with Kenneth Walker or something, and then he's just completely nothing. Right, but Travis Homer is already on IR. Yep. And yesterday, uh, last night, again, I haven't updated my rankings yet today. I'm going to wait till the Friday practice reports. But uh, Kenneth Walker showed up on the practice report. Uh, mm. the injury report, uh, list as well. So we don't know if he's going to play or not, but certainly if he's less than 100%, you feel like you feel pretty good about the, the massive workload that Rashad Penny should get on the road at New Orleans. I'm in on Rashad Penny this week as a flex. Yep. Speaking of massive workloads, Tyler Lockett's had 30 targets the last three weeks. Dude. Geno Smith has kind of locked onto him. Uh, what are you doing with Tyler Lockett this week? Just an automatic start for the time being? I don't being? think he's an automatic start, but he, again, he's a wide receiver three. I'm at wide receiver 24 here. I think if you're starting a pass catcher, I still feel better about him than DK Metcalf. I know Metcalf had a big game last week, but at least six catches and 75 yards now in three straight games for Tyler Lockett. Like that kind of consistency, we know about Lockett's talent. But getting that kind of consistency from him is really impressive as well. By the way, I also my expectation here is that that uh, Marshawn Lattimore will be on Metcalf because they use they move uh, they use Lockett a lot more all over the field. So uh, I prefer Lockett to Metcalf this week. I think he's a viable wide receiver three. Can I take you for a walk, Matthew? Because sure. I want to exp just pick your brain on something. Will we what hold if hands? What if Geno Smith was just good is your all wife, along? Is it, just like you want to take me on a walk? Is this because your wife is like <laughs> your wife is just like I, you, and now you're looking for other prey? Is this what's going on? The Sophia minus two hundred reference caches again. Yeah, exactly. That's a really a sure bet. Yeah. So Geno Smith. Yeah. Is 39th pick in the draft, comes into the Rex Ryan Jets. That's a bad Jets team. This is post the glory era of Mark Sanchez taking them to AFC title games, 2013. Uh, and it was a bad Jets team. Six and a half win total. They're bad. Yeah. Geno gets benched. And then for eight years, just isn't seen as a starter in the league. Just a perpetual backup. This is his first sustained and he, run. And he tore his ACL at one point, didn't he? Yeah, right. he's been yep. injured. He dealt with all of that. Right now, he is top three in the NFL in PFF grade, DVOA, passer rating and it's not like these have been terrible defenses like you have to play the broncos defense the niners defense which is the best in the league and he's performing like a top three quarterback in the nfl so you, i don't think he's going to be an mvp candidate or anything but i think we kind of have to adjust to think that geno smith might be yeah he might, might be, be good the, he might be the 15th best quarterback in the nfl right it's not he, crazy, is no, it? No, it, it's not. Look, this is a guy that was really productive at West Virginia as a, as a college quarterback. Um, uh, yeah, if, I want to say this is off the top of my head. Keep me honest, Blake, where we are. I think he was a second-round pick. Yep, second-round pick, high second round. High second round. High second round. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, it's not like – I mean, there's, there's a little bit of draft capital, uh, and so it, it has been a minute, as the kids say. But I don't think that's a crazy premise at all that maybe – you know what? 
maybe Geno Smith is good. Yep. Again, like, you know, they wrote me off. I ain't right back. <laughs> you know, is- like, I, listen, I, I just, as, as, stor- as NFL stories go, that would be awesome. Yep. Like, that, like, honestly, Russell Wilson, w- Russell Wilson wanted out of Seattle, make no mistake. And so it's, it's unfair to Geno Smith to sort of compare him to Russell Wilson because they're different players with different careers. But, like, there is something to the idea of, like, you, you, you know, like, Russell Wilson's certainly struggling now. And Geno Smith, like, again, everyone thought the Seahawks were, were – and through four games, Geno Smith's been the better quarterback than yep. Russell Wilson. That, that's, you know. I think he is a serious chance to win Comeback Player of the Year. To me, it's Saquon and Geno and then the rest. All right, let's get into Chris Olave, the red – Rifle proof, Chris Olave. Distinction. 33 targets the past three weeks. Now, I think he is someone that you're just starting regardless of Dalton or Winston. Yeah, I mean, and it's not looking great for Winston. We'll see how Friday, but, you know, Winston missed yesterday, as did Michael Thomas. So we expect a lot of targets here for Chris Olave, who is at 80 yards or a touchdown in three straight games. The talent is obvious as well. You certainly love, you know, it's one of those things where you're just like, you know, hey, you're playing Seattle. Like, it's like you had me at Seattle. They're yeah. home to Seattle. Uh, and there's only been um, three teams in the NFL worse against the pass than the Detroit, I'm um, sorry, than the Seattle Seahawks this year. So, Saints at home to Seattle. Yeah, give me some Chris Olave yep. as an easy locked in top 20 play this week. For those watching, we're showing offensive rookie of the year odds powered by BetMGM, where Chris Olave is now the clear favorite at plus 450 in front of Kenny Pickett, Drake London, Romeo Dobbs. And then Damian Pierce, uh, Garrett Wilson, George Pickens, Brace Hall. I do think that Olave is probably the rightful favorite just because of the targets that he's going to get. But inter- like, I actually think that that market is the betting market that ties most into fantasy than any okay. other market just because it's just purely about production. It's purely about statistical production. It's you not about like to be being... on a winning team. Oh, you don't? Okay. It's not really. I mean, Saquon won it on a, like a 5-11 and 11 Giants team. I don't think that's a prerequisite. Uh, it's more about just about production. So, um, just I, think if on... Kenny, I think if Kenny Pickett is good. Yes. Then I, I mean, you know, quarterbacks, I just sort of feel like it's a quarterback league. So if, yes. if Kenny Pickett is good and everyone's saying like, oh, good, we figured out our post-Ben solution, yep. then um, I think it would probably be him. But there's no question. He has the talent and the opportunity to put up big numbers the rest yep. of the way. Yep. Okay, let's jump into Titans Commanders. Uh, I'll start with Robert Woods, who got into the end zone but just hasn't seen the volume that maybe we hoped for. He's had 12 or more fantasy points now in back-to-back games. Traylon Burke is not going to play in this game without the turf toe. And, again, you had me at Commanders. (laughs) I mean, Washington is a bottom-eight pass defense. They've been absolutely brutal as well. No team has given up more touchdowns to opposing wide receivers this year than my Washington Commanders. There we go. Hail the Commanders. Hail victory. They've also given up the third most yards to the position as well. It's a team that plays poorly. Robert Woods maybe has lost a step, but he's – uh, you know, he's still a very accurate route runner. I think he gets enough volume here to pay off for you. I think he's borderline wide receiver three and four. Yeah, I think it's a good sign that Derrick Henry has looked better the past two weeks because that entire Titans passing game has always been off of play action where Tannehill is one of the best in the league. Now let's talk about your guy, Terry McLaurin, who is coming off of a tough game where uh, Trayvon Diggs had the game of his life against McLaurin. But have you lost any faith in uh, Terry McScore? No, like and by the way, Curtis Samuel returned to practice today, so that's helpful. We'll see if Jahan Dotson uh, plays. He limit, practiced limited on a limited basis today. But Samuel is back at practice, and so with him and McLaurin, it's sort of hard to kind of pick your poison. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I have McLaurin as a top 30 play this week. Titans have played better defense recently, but they're still on the season. They're a bottom four pass defense, and I do think they're going to have to throw. Make no mistake, Carson Wentz, second in the NFL in pass attempts through four games. It is a passing offense. It is a passing offense. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.